What are you? Hey everybody, this is Emily and I'm here with Brian and we are here with another week of cut, our... Cut, cut. I just did this. Hey! I, I don't want to do that anymore. Can we cut? Are we allowed to do that? <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Emily and I'm here with Brian and we are here for another week of our Unscripted series. And today we're going to be talking about our Your God is Too Angry. A angry, yeah. Yeah, so this was our last one in the Your God is Too. So before we kind of dive in specifically to the anger, um, of this whole series, which one for you is the most challenging to write and why? That's a great question. Well, I really loved this series. Mm -hmm. I, I loved uh, anytime I get to talk with someone about misconceptions that we have about God. Those are conversations that really breathe life into me because I feel that so many <clears throat> of our insecurities or things that we struggle with kind of go back to what our conceptions of God really are. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I was at, uh, I, working with student ministry, so many times I would talk about what our identity is as Christ followers and who we're created to be and, and why we're created. And so much so that when some students would kind of talk about what they hear about at youth group, they'd be like, oh, well, we, we hear about Chipotle and uh, our, our identity in Christ and the Cubs. You know what I mean? So like, mm. there are some patterns to what I would talk yeah. about enough. But really our identity in Christ to me is a huge thing that when we start to really wrap our minds around that, we can grow in really big ways that maybe we are holding ourselves back prior to that, if that makes sense. So to answer your question, um, I think, I think your God is too exclusive would be the one that was the most challenging mm. for me to put my thoughts together because I, I know what I believe, but I also wanted to say it in a way that would make sense for people who struggle with that and people who um, who don't because they don't question it. And yeah. uh, I think the reason I wanted to choose my words carefully, which I try to do in every message, you know, but I wanted to make sure that I... I wasn't saying something that would kind of muddle the conversation mm -hmm. or the topic. Does that make sense? No, it totally does. Because, I mean, you think about it is, you know, most sermons are only about 20 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So that's really not a lot of time to unpack some of these huge misconceptions. Yeah. They're just like these huge theological thoughts. Right. 20 minutes is not a <clears throat> long time. No to really dive into that. In fact, I've got uh, books in my library that, uh, and not not all of the ones that exist about this topic, but I have books where people are engaging this uh, theological issue and it's it's enough ink to fill a book, to, right. to write about, you know what I mean? And so, uh, and there are even books where people with different perspectives, like they write an essay or, essay like a big huge chapter and then everyone else responds to it oh wow and then they do the same thing with other people's perspective on it and so to kind of distill what i believe even into a 20 22 minute message was kind of wow that's that's a lot and in a way to make it hopefully engaging and and relevant right well yeah because so. i think that's like a challenging things with sermons too because like i mean i'm still kind of newer to the game of writing sermons is trying to, it's not you just standing up and being like, here's what I believe. Yeah. It's forming it in a way that people, no matter where they're starting from, have like a place to enter into the sermon. Yeah. And that's definitely like an art in itself of figuring out how to get people that are all in these different places to come to a central location. Right. Yep. So that's great. So then... um. So, because I even got the opportunity to preach on the year God yeah. is too small the very first week we did this. Did a great job, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. But yeah, so, and I just liked that each week could stand on its own, mm -hmm. but each week had its own powerful message within each one. Yeah. But so, but kind of on like a funnier note, I guess, you were talking about your, um, 
your trick shots that you did and how you busted out a window in your parents' house. Passes. Trick passes. Trick passes. Yes. Yes. Because I uh, would never try to sell my trick shot because they wouldn't ever really go in. So Gotcha. Yeah. So, thank you for the correction. But yes, yeah, so you were saying that that was like the big rule in your house growing up that you can yeah. play ball in the house. Are there any rules like that that you have for your girls that are like absolutely not in the Swanson house? Well, yeah, funnily <laughs> enough. Is that a word, funnily? Today? Funny, funny enough. So um, last night, nope, today's Monday. Uh, you all know we premiere this video, right? Yeah, okay, great. So we're filming on Monday. So yesterday, um, Poppy comes in and she's got a little mini basketball for a... Uh, you know, it's a mini hoop that can go up and down and it's in our one of our rooms. So we do have the rule, no ball in the house, but specific rooms. So like the living room, which has our TV and, you know, other things that you could break if you're just throwing around like crazy. And so uh, she brings it into the room and Rachel's on the couch and Rachel says, hey, let's play catch. <laughs> Poppy's like, OK. And I'm like, wow, she must not have listened to my message to uh, <laughs> too well had, but so anyway, it was just funny. So, um, what's your question again? So, what rules are not allowed in the Swanson house yes. for so, your girls? Yeah, no playing ball in certain rooms of the house. We are uh, we're a no shoes in the house family. Mm. So, you take your shoes off as soon as you come in. We break this all the time, you know, and our yeah. kids kind of call us out on it, and we'll be like, "Well, we did buy the carpet, you know, we're we paying bought the for carpet, so, it's so like." Yeah. So, um, I don't know. We, we always tell our kids the rules we have are to keep you safe or to make sure we, you know, have nice things. So I don't have one off the top of my head other than those really. Yeah. My kids would probably be like, Oh, oh well, well here's, everything. <laughs> here's our list of the things. Ugh, so. There you go. There you go. I was just curious because, yeah, there are those like certain rules in the house that you yeah. got to follow. My family all growing up, the shoes in the house was not a big deal. Uh -huh. But then when I married Kyle, shoes in the house was a very big deal. Mm -hmm. So now I have been trained <laughs> to yeah, take fresh go. juice off in the house. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do have one we that we stick to and we don't ever kind of let slide. And that's uh, we don't play with doors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fingers getting pinched in the doors or... Uh, it, it extends and applies to slamming the door, you know? Mm. And so um, so we got a big rule against slamming the door if you're mad. Like, you don't do that. You just shut the door gently because you don't have to get your anger out that way. Mm. And I heard about this trick when <sighs> Libby was really young. And I thought it was genius. And so I thought, as soon as this scenario comes up, I'm going to pull this. And so she slammed a door and uh, the trick is that you go, you get a hammer and a, a screwdriver and you just calmly take out the hinges and pull the door off as a way to teach you, hey, we don't slam doors. So a door slams shut and, I, and I'm like, this is it. It's my time. <laughs> this was like a year and a half ago. This is it. It's my time. So I get the hammer, I get the screwdriver and Rachel sees me. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like taking the door off. And so I go up and I take Livy's door off. She's like, what are you doing? And I said, we don't slam doors in our house. And you know this. And by this point, I've got it. I'm on the third hinge, right? Tap, tap, tap. And she said, that wasn't me. That was Rosie. <laughs> As you're mid taking off. Yeah. Of this so I'm like, it was. And Rosie in her room, after she had slammed the door, I hear, yeah, it was me. <laughs> and so she wasn't old enough to take her door off, so I put Livy's hinges back on, and I apologized. <laughs> Your perfect moment foiled. I jumped the gun. Jumped the gun. But that you do talk about that in your sermon, that like it, it is good for kids to see their parents be angry, because mm -hmm. like you can correlate yeah. that to like taking care of them and wanting them to be safe. Yeah. Um, and I really love that illustration because I do think when we, when you think of the term like an angry God, you kind of think of that like fire and brimstone, mm -hmm. but it's really loving anger. And I think that that's like a harder imagery or a picture to yeah. come up with. People don't seem to understand um, 
what that means, like a, a holy anger or a loving anger, which mm -hmm. we don't really typically put those two words together. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you start to really understand scripture and you see some of these passages where God, he is angry, yeah. you know, it's, it's because uh, people who do know better mess up or even if they don't. And he's, scripture is all about helping us see the best way to live life, the best way to experience what it means to be human and to be a created being that can love and forgive and serve. And when we are doing whatever sin, those are things that just get in our way of being able to love better. Mm -hmm. You know, when, if I lie to you about something, it not only causes a rift in our relationship, but it keeps our relationship from being the best that it could be. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it totally does. And I think a lot of that imagery comes from, you know, I, you even said this, like the Old Testament. So if you mm -hmm. hear someone that says like, oh, well, you know, I don't believe in the God of the Old Testament because that's an angry God. I believe in a God of like the New Testament. Like, what do you say to that? Yeah. Well, that's a big topic for sure. Yeah. It, it's another one of those things that if someone didn't write a whole book about, they would definitely have a huge chapter or a section of a book that you could address uh, as a topic. So my, I guess my elevator speech for, mm -hmm. you know, the God of the Old Testament seems to be so different from the God of the New Testament is that it, it's in how you read scripture and understand what scripture really is. Uh, the Bible is this very dynamic book that was compiled over a couple of thousand years by over 40 authors from uh, different contexts, um, people who were uh, enslaved, people who were in exile, people who were um, in a kingdom that was thriving, people who were subject to oppression by other empires. And yeah. so when you take it as a whole, you've got to really understand in one book, if this is how God is represented and it's different than another book, it might have been separated by a thousand years. Right. And our perspectives change over time in our lifetime. And so the way I understand um, baseball, um, pitchers and catchers report soon. Uh, within a month, Nathan, is that right? Plan. Yeah, so that's the plan. So anyway, um, my understanding of baseball is so much better than when I was a seven-year-old. Mm. You know, I knew all the rules as a seven-year-old for what I should know as a seven-year-old, but the the nuances to the game and and all of the reasons behind why someone would trade a, a certain player for another player, um, that sort of thing, I, I get better. And so as we grow as a human, the older we get, the more understanding we have for things. And I think that we can kind of apply that to understanding how the Bible came about. Um, if, if you're trying to teach a human to grow up and be a loving, mature adult, the rules and the impression about life that you give them as a four-year-old, way different than you do when they're 18. Right. And so I think that when you look at the scope of scripture, God's kind of helping humanity grow up. You know, We wouldn't have been able to hear turn the other cheek, forgive your enemy, love your neighbor as yourself three, 4,000 years ago because that wouldn't, <laughs> society hadn't evolved enough. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I think God is introducing um, laws, commands, uh, ideas slowly so that humanity can start to kind of catch up to it. Yeah. Does and that I, make sense? It does. And I think you make a point of like, it's not a this or that. It's the whole, like it takes the Old Testament and the New mm -hmm. Testament to have this full image yeah. of God. So it's not a picking either or. Yeah. It's the whole image of it. And if you think about it, when Jesus said, if you want to know what God is like, look at who I am. Look at what I'm like, how I, you know, my teachings, my stories. And if the God of the Old Testament really was that much different than the God of the New Testament, I think Jesus would have addressed that. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, I came to 
fulfill the law, not to usurp it, mm -hmm. not to get rid of it. Um, he said to Philip, who asked that question, hey, what's God like? Show, show us the Father. Jesus was like, well, hey, you've been around me for so long. This is what God is like. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's important to remember when you're trying to figure out why does God seem so angry, you know, in Obadiah versus right. um, Ephesians? Right. So. Yeah. Well, great. Well, this is something we could obviously talk about for a really long time. Yeah. Um, if that sparked any questions for you or anything, please drop them in the comments. Send us an email. Um, we love talking about this kind of stuff. So please send it our way. Um, next week, we get to start a brand new sermon series. We're going to be talking about Shining Through. So I hope you guys can join us for that. Join us on Facebook. Join us on YouTube. But until then, we hope you guys have a great week.